Hallelujah. Let's hold hands together. Yes, just someone can just play for me. Thank you. God bless you. And we're standing here only because you, you made us. When our backs were against the wall and you looked to see if it was all. And we're standing here only because you made Father, this is our declaration. We sing because we believe. Father, we decree and declare that we are grateful again for an opportunity to learn your ways. We have come to see, we have come to understand. And I pray that by your spirit, you would open us up further, show us the deep things of the kingdom. And with it, oh God, grant us access to authority and power and predictable results. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Um, we'll go straight to the business of the evening. Um, the Lord put something in my heart to share. I can only imagine how the prior sessions have been. I was trying to probe your pastor to find out how the other sessions have been. Amen. So we'll start tonight from 2 Corinthians. Let's start from there. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, please. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 5. Very powerful. Is it alright if I move around? Not that we are sufficient, please look up, of ourselves to think anything of ourselves. Let's read the other part together. One to read. But our sufficiency is of God. One more time. But our sufficiency. Now Paul is teaching the church in Corinth. Part of his apostolic ministry. And he's mentoring them on the things of the kingdom. The things of the spirit. And he gets to this point And he's teaching them. That every time you see us display dimensions of results and possibilities that are not normal with men. There is a secret behind it. He's trying to open them to something very deep now. He's saying that every time you see us manifest dimensions that are not normal for ordinary men, that the secret, please keep that scripture if you can, is that we do not have anything that means in ourselves and outside of this provision we are not much and he says that our sufficiency is of god are we together yes our adequacy the equipping the ability is of god that means that every time you see a man Operate in dimensions of results that are not given unto mere men. He traces this that the secret is that that man has been granted an adequacy that is not from the realm of men. Our sufficiency is of God. Everybody say my sufficiency is of God. One more time. My sufficiency Remember that we're just starting the year. So we're dealing with issues of sufficiency, ability. To be sufficient means to have that which is adequate enough for the purpose intended. Are we together now? 
you sustain sufficiency, whether financially, whether intellectually, and so on and so forth. And the Bible says, if you turn aside in the day of battle, that what went wrong is that your strength. In other words, there is a dimension, look up please, there is a dimension of sufficiency that was lacking. We are talking of capacity here. Remember the Bible tells us about a man called Elijah the Tishbite. That one time he was weak and tired and then an angel brought him bread to eat. Is that true? He ate and then he slept back and he tapped him and said, eat again for the journey. In other words, this race will require sufficiency. So you must be empowered. And the Bible says he went in the strength of what he had. Conferences like these are designed by the Spirit of God to provide us the equippings that make for walking in victory practically. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. And Paul was teaching the church in, Col in Colossae and Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Paul was praying a prayer for the church that they be grounded and be filled with three dimensions of the operations of the word of God. Number one, that they be filled with knowledge, the knowledge of his will. Number two, that they be filled with all wisdom. And then number three, spiritual understanding. So we're dealing with the issues of sufficiency here, that you can trace the results of men to the sufficiency, the equippings, the ability that they have. And Paul is acknowledging that our sufficiency is of God. Are we together? Second scripture we'll look at very quickly, Second Peter chapter 1. Popular scripture, but let's look at it. Verse 2. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2, please. Would you read with me? One, to read. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Stop. Leave the other part. Grace and peace. Now, remember, we're talking of sufficiency and equipping of God. And it so happens that the name given to the sufficiency that God provides for men is called grace. Are we together now? Grace is not just limited to the provisions that make for salvation. Grace is a generic provision. It is the name given to every good and perfect gift that comes only from God, routed through the office of the Christ. Every dimension of spiritual possibility that can reach men from God through Christ is called grace. Wisdom is grace. Faith is grace. Are we together now? So every time men obtain equippings that come from God, routed through the office of the Christ, is a dimension of sufficiency that the Bible calls grace. Are we together? And the Bible is telling us that that grace can be multiplied. Are you following my case now? That the sufficiency and the equipping that God gives a man can be multiplied. Grace and peace be multiplied. We're, we're not concerned necessarily for now about how it is multiplied. It's just establishing the fact that it is a possibility that the sufficiency of God invested upon a man can multiply. That means that it is not just predicated upon the love of God. There is a system in the kingdom by which men can determine the extent of the sufficiency of God that is upon them. This is the factor that creates disparity of results. It's not the love of God. The Bible says he gave unto one five talents. Are we still together? And then to one, two, the other one, not according to his love for them, according to their several abilities. And the end of that parable showed that he knew what he was doing. And we're standing here only because. So grace and peace be multiplied unto me. Through the knowledge of God and so on and so forth. Let me show you something that will surprise you. Second Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, let's read from verse 8. 
this is a scripture that I'm not sure has been understood properly. This was the, the Paul. Paul was stating what he called the thorn in his flesh, correct? He was talking about lest he be lifted and be exalted because of the abundance of the revelation given to him. And keep that scripture there. I hope you know that when you read Ephesians chapter 3, Paul began to say that the, a grace was given to him. And that that grace was given to him is a grace that can make all men see. It's a grace. Are we together now? And he's saying that on account of the the dimensions of God committed to him. He was saying that there was a messenger. Now, let me tell you something. I, I thank God because this is a very sound Bible church. I've listened to your pastor and he's an awesome teacher of the word. This is true. Are we together? Now, listen, let me tell you this. I hope you know that the characters that were used in scripture were men. And that although they were used, they were also learning God. That means there were many dimensions of their communications that are still worthy of editing with respect to the reference Christ. You have to understand what I'm sharing. So that just because there are Bible characters that were used, remember the treasure is always in earthen vessels. So the Bible, you have to consider that dimension that the vessel is earthen. That means their knowledge was progressive. And there were things they, for instance, in the Old Testament, they did not have the opportunity to have a personalized encounter with God. Because encounter with God truly, sustainably, only happens through the agency of the Holy Spirit. And they did not have that opportunity. Are we together? The Holy Spirit is the revealer of Christ. And so they attributed everything good or bad to God. There were many things that were attributed to God that we know now by the ministry of the Holy Spirit that is not exactly so. So Jesus came as a reference so that we can now compare what they said. Remember, he came as the express image of the invisible God. So we can now use his earth work as a standard to reference what was said about him. And if there be need for correction, we are just. This is what repentance is about. The adjustment that realigns us back. So Paul is speaking here. I just said all that so that we will understand this. Paul was saying that a, a messenger from Satan was sent to him. Now watch this. And he said for this thing. What thing? The thorn he called in his flesh. I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And let's see the response of the Lord. Verse 9. And he said... Ah, yeah. unto me uh -huh. my grace is sufficient for thee stop this is a very interesting answer I'm meeting the Lord over my challenges and my issues are we together now and I'm saying Lord I know it is within your power to take this pain to take this poverty to take this challenge and his answer is not you are free his answer is not be delivered his answer is that there is a provision in my economy. There is a, what you need is sufficiency because your, your prayer request is a revelation of bankruptcy of a dimension of spiritual adequacy. He is trying to tell him that this issue is not just the issue of healing or deliverance. That your situation in life is a reflection of the measure and the kind of sufficiency that is upon you. Are you understanding what I'm sharing now? Yes. So he's telling Paul that my grace is sufficient for you. In other words, there is a provision in my work with you to rise to a realm where this will no longer be a challenge. He's not saying endure the pain. No. No. Because we make it look like he's saying just endure. No, no, no. This is not about endurance. That there is a way of escape already. There is a dimension of sufficiency that can take care of this predicament. Don't lose what I'm sharing. We're discussing sufficiency. That the grace of God is called his sufficiency. 
upon a man and that that sufficiency is responsible for the dimensions of results that we experience in this kingdom are we together now that the quality of our work in this kingdom is not just predicated on the love of god alone but is predicated upon the dimension and the level of the grace that is upon our lives the bible says that grace can be multiplied that means that two believers can be in lagos they love God. They are members of the same church. But the possibilities that their lives command will differ, sometimes sharply. And Paul is identifying the factor, that the factor may not be the, the, the difference in their hearing necessarily, but that for some reason, they have been able to route grace at different levels. Are we together? My grace is sufficient for you. So grace and peace can be multiplied. And that the results that happen in our lives as believers are a report card showing us the dimension of sufficiency that we have accessed. All things are possible but not for everyone. You have to understand this. Our possibilities depend on the dimension and the quality of the graces that are upon our lives are we together and that we can grow this is good news because that means where i was yesterday i can transit there is an ability to transit from the dimension that i was yesterday into a newer version of me i can access a higher level of grace so that the things I could not do yesterday, I can now do today. You will know I have grown by the results I now command. This is the reason why limitation is an insult on the system of God. Because when you are limited, it attempts to, to negate the fact that God's grace can be multiplied. It's as though you have plateaued at a dimension. And conferences like this expand you so that you can access higher levels of graces. And then you begin to move from one dimension to the other. Listen, it's not very difficult to succeed if we understand these things. The knowledge, the spiritual understanding that you have and the grace that sponsors what you do can turn anybody to a sign and a wonder are we together so we're talking about the grace of god here now this is where i think there is um I, I may observe a few things many believers have desires now please look up we have desires we have intentions we have dreams we have goals we have aspirations but many times and we know that the kingdom of god is a compendium of limitless possibilities so every dimension that we seek to attain we know either through uh, the teaching of the word or instinctively we know that god is able to take us there but the challenge usually is the requisite spiritual knowledge allocated for the result we desire that's where the gap is so we continue to hope that it will happen we continue to shadow box and just guess a lot of spiritual laws in hope that one of them will take us there conferences like this bring us to realms of accuracy so that we know what is allocated for what the bible says jesus himself knew what to do and now i am telling you that in the economy of god zeal is not enough that in the economy of god sincerity is not enough that in the economy of god passion is not enough that our results are governed by the extent of sufficiency that is invested upon us so you can look at an individual who should not work at certain levels of results unfortunately the grace that is upon him will necessitate that he must work in those results it's why when you look at people by the flesh you will be angry because many times they don't look like it but the results will never fail because the grace upon them will make that they produce those results 
are we blessed this is why when we come for conferences like this we are not only learning there is an impartation happening an upgrade are we together so you will walk out of this place and you can know what you have received by what new things come into your space it shouldn't be the same no and god is able to make all grace that's where we are going to next watch this <sighs> blessed be the name of the lord second corinthians chapter 9 may this revelation never depart from your understanding in the name of jesus now look up please paul again is teaching he's teaching his subject here is giving he's talking about giving are we together and he's likening giving to sowing and reaping and all of that and then when we get to verse 9 he makes a very interesting statement and god everybody say and god, and god. is able that means god has an ability to make everybody say all grace all please one more time say all grace all notice he didn't say god is able to make grace all grace that means there are different kinds you can have some when the bible says all that means that it is possible to have some please talk to me god is able to make what all grace let me explain what this means to you that remember the whole idea is that you produce good works the whole idea is that you have what sufficiency but that the system is that god can route all the graces responsible for the results that must happen that god has an ability to make all grace to abound towards you abound towards you please can i have four or five gentlemen is that all right any four or five of you just come quick no no my my friend this man is already it's not impartation okay now watch this please just spread yourselves now watch this i want to explain this scripture please keep the scripture there this is what paul is saying Paul is acknowledging that the possibilities, the results we produce in this kingdom are traceable to the kind, the dimension, and the level of grace that is at work in our lives. Are we clear on that? So he's saying that God is able to make all grace. Immediately we know that there are different levels and kinds of graces. It is not very accurate to believe grace is generic. No. No. Grace is like energy. It may be the same energy, but there are different modes of the operation. And this is what he's saying. There is a grace responsible for wealth and abundance in the kingdom. Look up, please. There is a grace responsible for speed and recovery and restoration. There is a grace responsible for influence. Are we together now there is a grace responsible for favor there are different graces now this is our lives and our destinies will need these graces like a pass for the doors to open you're not just going to come and say i'm a christian i'm born again let the doors of favor open no the grace that makes for that result must be upon you are we together now so i have the grace for speed hold my hands every time i walk this is the grace that goes with me watch this as far as delay is concerned it will never come near me because the grace is there but i can still be broke watch this there is because the requisite level of grace that makes for prosperity this the availability of this will not replace that Believers, watch this because I may be describing you now. So you can finish school at age 19 because you carry this grace. You can become a PhD holder at age 22, yet you will not have one car. Because the grace that makes for this dimension of possibility is not in your life. You can be a faithful Christian 
I show you how the economy of God's kingdom works. Then one day you come for a conference like this. And then whilst the word is going and your pastor is teaching. Another dimension. Hold my hand. Watch this. Listen. Paul is teaching us here. Now these things are invisible. But your, the circumstances in your life know them and they honor them. So I'm carrying a grace for speed. Now I'm carrying a grace for wealth. Watch this. The grace for wealth will make that all of the products and the services I produce, there will always be someone to come to reward me in exchange. But the only problem is that my life may still be hard, although I'm prospering, because I do not have the grace for favor. Now, the proof of favor is not money. The proof of favor is the loyalty of men. Are we together? I can have this, but I will have to wake up in the morning by myself. Sleep late in the night by myself and even eat the bread of sorrow. I'm prospering. Now, look at my life. If I come to pastor for counseling, I'll say, pastor, by God's grace, I finish school fast. By God's grace, I'm not poor. And she says, what is wrong? I don't know why men don't like me. You see, I say, see, listen, if you understand this, you will know how to help people because their complaints are revealing the deficiency of the grace. Now, Paul is teaching us that the goal is that you produce good works dimensions of results and that these results are controlled by several levels of graces just help those under the anointing please listen look at me there is a grace that is responsible for increase that was the grace that was released on five loaf and two fish. He didn't just give thanks. It's what your eyes saw. The eye of your spirit must see more than what happened there. When that grace is upon you, anything can become anything. There was a grace that came from Samuel to Saul. And he said, while you are going back, you will find three people, each of them holding two loaves of bread. They will suddenly honor you and give you two. What changed? This was a man who was looking for a missing donkey for three days. Challenges are not generic. They are relative to the graces that confront them. This is true. Please, I hope you are getting what I'm saying. It's, tonight's session is just an admonishment and then we'll pray. I'm not really, really teaching. I just want to just add to the many things that God is doing in our lives. And God, watch this. Please give us that scripture now. You will now understand what Paul is saying. Look up, please. Because someone's life is truly changing now. And God in 2020 is able to make. Watch this. Listen, sit down. That means there is an explanation for why 2019 was the way it was in my life. Now I see. I understand why my destiny helper could not reach me. I understand that in the economy of God, situations answer to graces. Listen, it is the reason why the helper of your destiny can look at you and sometimes you can say, sir, I'm trusting God for if I can get one of your, your houses just to stay. And he says, no. And he will carry a house and go to another man of God and say, can you give me the honor of having a house in my estate? What is the difference? Nobody is greedy. Nobody is truly greedy. It is what is on you that controls what is around you. understand what i teach you today and you can begin to get the results from today it's true the truths of the kingdom are provable 
the results show here and now now you will love your pastor for the sacrifice of outsourcing the graces to supply to you you see that when you invite a man of God you don't invite a body you invite a dimension of grace introducing that dimension of grace to your space to the end that he will make all grace now the bible says god is able but remember in the system of god every house is built by some man yet mysteriously god is the builder so as men do these things it is god walking through them it's why it's dangerous to miss conferences like this you may miss a moment that you will pay with one extra year 10 extra years of your life i was glad he said when they said unto me let us go the house of god is not a restaurant the house of god is not a viewing center there are things that only happen in the house of god so let's continue now this guy is looking for a job And you know how Africa is. You know how these are countries. Oh, he has a certificate in his hand. And that's all he has. My God. And now he wants to survive today's world. And he goes with his CV and says, Sir, I am a sincere person. I love God. I'm a member of this and that and that church. I'm a member of this. Would you give me a job? And the person said, Well, I, 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 well let me just keep it. And he will throw your, what they call it, in the, in the, right there. But then he comes for a conference like this and places that grace on his certificate. And while he's on his way home, someone who has no business calling him. Now listen, it is the grace that will make you feel like easing yourself and then you will see a notice. You, you didn't just feel like the grace is movement. Truly speaking, believe me when I tell you there are no coincidences. No, 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 no. There is a grace that can make men remember men. It's a grace. The Bible says Mordecai. Mordecai saved the life of a king and they forgot him they recorded what he did but he was not rewarded joseph helped the wine presser get back and he forgot but something happened and one day he said, ah i re no he didn't just remember he didn't just remember the same way someone who has written on the table help this person he wrote it last year that writing is still there he looks at it every day but cannot remember but you'll be surprised that as you are seated here now that someone is somewhere thinking and remembering and God is able to make all grace now let me tell you what it means the people that get strange results are those who are like bees they know how God is able to make all grace hold my hands now imagine a man like this in Lagos Are you seeing now you think you are all colleagues hold on i wake up in the morning thank you jesus you are not moving alone when you get to a closed door the grace for speed opens the door when you get to a place where you are not accepted the grace for favor opens the door hallelujah the grace for favor you go to work late you should be punished but your lateness makes you meet the director and he says ah, why are you here and say i'm so sorry sir um my children went he said okay no problem are you the one they've been talking about now, you should be punished but the grace hebrews chapter 4 please verse 16 Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 
If you're a Christian, read it with me, please. One to read. Let us therefore, aha. Uh -huh. Stop. It's called the throne of what? The throne of? So that we can obtain mercy, aha, uh -huh, and find. Stop. So this is how God helps men who are in need. That every time a man is in need, you are not in need of money. You are not in need of a job. No, the money, the job, the challenges are only reflecting what is deficient. You are not in need of a house. You are not in need of a land. No, they got not the land in possession by their own swords. This is how it works in the kingdom. Those who are planted in the house of God, this is why they flourish. They that be planted, why are they planted? Because the house of God, listen to me, Jacob told us the definition of where must be called the house of God. In Genesis 28, when he got up from his dream, he said, surely the Lord was in this place and I knew not. He said, this is the gate of heaven, the house of God. That means every house of God must have a connection that touches the throne room from that location. Otherwise, it is not the house of God. And there is a throne that supplies graces. It is why if you spend more than two years in a living church and your life does not shift, you see, let me tell you, it's because either your unbelief or your dishonor to the grace ministering to you may be why you are where you are. It's impossible as a believer. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? That you are a faithful worker. And you see, now, now you can look at your pastor's life and you can almost with, with surgical precision x-ray the graces and say, this is why people like pastor. This is why someone will collect his salary and counsel me and say, may God help you and yet carry it to pastor and bless him. This is what is responsible for that kind of result. Listen, understand what I teach you and you will play life like a chess. It's true. Some of us, there are many people around us, but there is, there is nothing that is an advantage. You have an uncle, you have an auntie, some trust in chariots, the Bible says. Some in horses. But we will trust in the name of our God. And in spite of all the people that you have, none can help. I show you the way we do it in the kingdom. A grace. You see why Paul said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. The fellowship, the sharing together, the participation of the Holy Spirit insists that it abides with you because your results depend on it. Are we together now? Yes. I brought you a word from the Lord that it is not difficult. 2020 will become like 2019, 2018, 20 for anybody who does not access grace. I am telling you sincerely. Now, I heard you making powerful faith-filled confessions before I came up. And I was blessed in my heart. And, I, and God sent me to just support this that your pastor has spoken and communicated unto you over. Listen, that when you carry these graces, hold my hands. Don't forget this illustration in the name of Jesus. Some of you write from this place because you see sometimes your destiny helper can be sitting close to you and you carry this grace and put on your phone and you will see several missed calls why are you calling me 
I just slept this afternoon and I had a dream. Where are you? Do you now have a job? This is what happens to people whose lives look miraculous. Whose life... That's why Paul said, listen, when you understand this, you will see that our sufficiency... We look like we are so great in ourselves, but the mystery is what we are carrying, not what we are outside of Christ. And that anybody who understands that is humble enough to admit and also communicate the same to people, that the extraordinary results you see is not just the making of men alone, but that there is the grace of God. And God, Covenant Christian Center, is able to make all grace. The question is not when will my land come. The question is, Lord, the grace dimension it takes for territory. Because it's a grace. It's a grace. It is not, oh God, when will my business expand? It is, Lord, what is the grace? It is not the economy. Ah, 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 ah. Find a way of making yourself believe. You see, the kingdom is a culture. The kingdom is a system that exempts. The reason why we are compassionate over what is happening on earth is not because we are afraid. It's because we have a mandate to be extensions of the life and the power of God. Left for us, there is a provision that exempts us. Our concern is not because of fear. Our concern is because of the participatory responsibility of kingdom citizens. So we don't move around as though we are helpless. There is a bailout system for us already. Our concern is proof of responsibility as matured sons and daughters of the kingdom. Are we together? When there was famine in Samaria, only two people were spared, the prophet and the king. There was no mention of them crying about themselves. The king cried because women were eating their children. And the prophet said, by this time, tomorrow. Can a man speak like that? What is upon us can change our lives. Listen, there's too much favor in Lagos. One week is too much. I know you think I'm bragging. I know you. I hope. I, I hope. <laughs> Having the readiness to judge all disobedience. When your obedience is complete. When you comply to the principles of the kingdom. You will stand to marvel and wonder at what your life becomes. Then you will know that the excuses you give are just the obvious ones, not the right ones. The real problem is the deficiency of the requisite level of grace. Let me tell you something before we pray very quickly. Graces are in levels. That means I can have the grace that makes for favor, but it's in levels. It can grow. Grace and peace be what? Multiplied. So just because I have these graces, I do not stop my hunger and my pursuit and my knowledge of the word. Remember that when we feast upon the word, we are enlarging our capacity and at, at, at the same time, at the same time, allowing for this grace to come upon us. There are many virgin dimensions that the saints need to come into that will produce results it is on account of these provisions that in experience we manifest as his workmanship that through the church his ecclesia that it will be revealed to principalities and powers the manifold wisdom there are things that we will do by the spirit of god there are things we will do by the hand and the grace of god that are not affordable in the world of men 
And so when people come to you and say, why do you do these things? Why do you command this level of dominion and grace? Then you will now tell them it is the grace of God. But it will not just be a Christian cliche to me, no, it's God. Now you know what you are saying. And if you want to help somebody now, you know how to help the person quickly. The way to help the person is not to impart grace. The way to help the person is to impart the requisite level of spiritual understanding. Grace is activated on the strength of knowledge. So when there is no knowledge and impartation is just an emotion, it's a complete waste of time. Remember, grace and peace is multiplied to the measure to which there is the knowledge that backs its operation. This is why blindly chasing impartation will not profit the saints. We must sustain the fortitude. It says, and that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation. Are we together? So on the strength of our receiving knowledge with meekness, the Bible says, then we expose ourselves to the atmospheres that bring the grace dimensions let me tell you a little story and then we'll pray. Some years ago, I was in a vision. The Lord opened my eyes. And I saw something that would change my life and change my understanding and introduce this understanding to my Christian experience. I saw a gigantic door when it looked like an ancient door and then I came closer and I found out that it was made of many smaller doors. Please follow closely. And on every door, a scripture was written. Every door, a scripture was written. And the doors were opening and closing. Opening and closing. And every time the doors opened, light would just come out. I saw this happening and I was watching. And then the Lord began to reveal to me that every time the revelation of scripture enters you, the grace dimension to demonstrate the experience of that truth also comes with it. That means I can know to what degree you have understood a dimension of spiritual truth by seeing the grace equivalent of that scripture. If it is true that you have understood the economic system of the kingdom, then the grace for wealth must honor that revelation by resting on your life. I will submit to you, respectfully so, that I believe that one of the issues with the body of Christ is that we have a lot of propositions without the grace, the grace dimension to defend them. So we know many things that should be. We know many things that can be. We know many things that must happen. But the fortitude to make them true, here and now. The Bible says, and the word became flesh. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Then, and only then, we beheld. Man will only behold that which becomes flesh. The system that translates spiritual realities to become our experiences here and now. This is how God is glorified. When that happens, Galatians 1.24 becomes a reality for the saints. And they glorified God in me. They glorified God in me. Not just that they glorified God somewhere. My life now becomes an effulgence of the glory of God. Remember the first miracle the miracle in Cana of Galilee. It says, this beginning of miracles did Jesus and manifested his glory. Your pastor is a compendium of graces that is a product of his spiritual understanding and the sacrifices that have been made through the years. And the results that follow your church are testaments that the graces are at work. Are we together now? It is important that with meekness, you must first discern and then sustain the technology of reception to now receive these graces. And you will begin to reproduce the grace that is upon this church. It's true.
those who do manufacturing there's something called quality control it's a system that insists that there is standardization of results is that true and i believe that as as members of the family of god and also a great church like this there should be some spiritual quality control system that means the least among us we should benchmark a standard there should be a standard of results spiritually financially intellectually in influence so that the least here becomes like david empowered by knowledge empowered by grace you can return back home with certainty and confidence knowing that there's no longer fear i know what to do tomorrow i know what to do in the office so when men are not loyal to me i need more than leadership i need a grace for favor as powerful as having people skills uh, and all of that and i know that you have been greatly mentored along those lines but then because human beings are spirits the spirits are hosted in human bodies and these spirits are constantly being manipulated you will need the grace that maintains stability it's risky to not be empowered covenant christian center you are a blessed church with a blessed pastor give evidence to your blessing let the results that show validate that the hand of god is mighty upon us and that for whatever level someone needs to be angry this evening that i have compassed this mountain long enough it's time for me to turn northwards i i thank god for the results I thank God for the results that a day will come listen um, you know when we talk about the blessing of the Lord especially financial prosperity a lot of believers think they are prosperous just because they have cars they have estates that is commendable but you are truly blessed when no amount invested in the kingdom becomes an inconvenience to your finances until you get to that level you are not blessed by God's standard The ease with which you can, you can become a priest to lift the purposes of God is the proof of wealth. And I know that God wants to take us there to dimensions where certain things will no longer become a concern for the kingdom because we are there as pillars. hallelujah yes and god let's look at that scripture finally and god is able god is able god is able god is able he's able to make the word make means to coordinate would you scatter yourselves around guys let's just do this one last time watch this this is me standing now by my strength I have no power to run and outsource this grace and run and outsource is too far God says leave that to me it is in my office as I quote the scripture come nearer guys and God is able to make he's able to make the graces within reach now remember he said repent not because you are sinners now I have brought the kingdom close to you I would not blame you for what is too far but now i have brought it close to you so he can now say receive because the grace has come close to you let's do it one last time this grace may be in the u.s if denied you visa many times now you know that it's, it's difficult humanly speaking to go there this grace are we together now this grace is somewhere in lagos scattered across and god says no i will give you pastors after my heart and one what will make them after my heart is the passion to look beyond themselves 
to have so much compassion on you that they can pay, they can invest, they can partner with the Holy Spirit to make these graces come closer to you. This is what happens in a conference like this. So he will leverage on his relationship with someone to bring a grace that would have been difficult. That's God working. Listen, people who dishonor men of God do not know what is happening in the realm of the spirit. The sacrifices that make these graces available. And God is able to make. Hold my hand, guys. Let this be you. Let this be your children. Let this be your office. I hope you know that these graces don't just come on men. It can come on things. It came on bread. It came on fish. The bread was processed, not planted to the earth. The fish was not planted to the sea, yet it multiplied. The grace came upon the rod of Aaron and it budded who are thou mountain before Zerubbabel listen it was not the stone that killed Goliath any part of Goliath hit by that stone he would still have died Goliath died before the stone got to him hold my hand guys for someone here there is a grace that must make for remembrance listen listen we are going to pray for another person here the delay is too much listen 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 you cannot accomplish one month's result in five years it's, it's, it doesn't give God glory that way for someone there is a grace that makes people hunger after God do you not know it is not normal no if it were normal you don't clap for people for walking it's normal to walk but when a man flies it's not normal so the fact that you have to pray for people to hunger after God it should tell you there is a grace that makes people hunger or that you can counsel and advise and counsel and advise it will not change anything there is a grace from heaven Watch this. I'm about to pray. You came here. Please give me a little volume. My friend, the person playing keyboard for me. You're standing here. Covenant Christian Center. Upon the grace of your pastor. But listen to me. It's time for us to move to another dimension. It's time for us to move to another level. This is January the 6th. It's time. I don't know what dimension you need to see the hand of God. We are men of faith. We are men of the word. Can I allow you for two minutes before I pray? I'd like you to open your mouth and let it be a desperate cry. The Bible says to come boldly, boldly, boldly before the throne of grace obtain mercy find grace obtain mercy find grace find grace for finances find grace for speed find grace that opens doors Hali Pakata are there people that pray here find grace for wealth and abundance find grace that grants you access to the loyalty of men find grace that will cause a generation to hear your voice one more minute someone is praying
Things will never be the same in my life again. Is someone praying? Pray for your wife. Pray for your husband. Pray for your children. Pray for your ministry. I found a secret that what is upon me is what controls what will be around me. Is someone praying? Few minutes and we're done. are done is someone praying let there be an opening ladies and gentlemen welcome to a new dimension possibilities by the spirit on account of the sufficiency for the overwhelming never ending reckless love of god oh he chases me down find still i'm found leaves the 99 i don't deserve it i don't deserve it till you give yourself away oh the over One minute, you are still praying. No shadow you will light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Is someone praying? No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. No wall you won't kick down. You won't tear down. Coming after me. One more time. Oh, no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down. Coming after I pray for you in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I stand in agreement and I stand in partnership with the grace upon your dear pastor I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus and I decree and declare the grace that will shift you to another dimension I have just two minutes to do this I want to pray for you for the grace for speed I want you to believe it you don't have to bring those out under the anointing our time is gone but I stretch my hands right now the kind of speed the Bible says and the hand of God came upon Elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel receive speed now in the name of Jesus Receive speed in the name of Jesus. I prophesy speed. Please help them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me speak favor over your life. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. And Esther found favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. The grace for favor works with sight. If a man can see you, they are compelled to bless you. I pray for you, standing upon the grace of your pastor. Carry the grace for favor. In the name of Jesus, I speak to Lagos. Let it open up to you. Open up to your business. Open up to ministry. Open up to your education. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, listen, and the king sent for Joseph 
and they brought him out of his dungeon no destiny helper comes by themselves there is a grace that calls them in the name that is above all names again standing upon the grace of your pastor everybody anointed and ordained to lift your hands in this season i command them to show up in your life finally for tonight I pray that in the name that is above all names every mountain that stands before you challenges are relative to the grace that confronts them I stand in partnership with the grace of your man of God and I speak to you prophetically for some of you by this time tomorrow I stand by the God of heaven and I declare supernatural breakthroughs over your life in the name of Jesus testimonies that will cause you to fear new dimensions in the name of Jesus may the Lord bless you wave your hands to Jesus holding towards me Your grace is abounding towards me.